Hi, my name is Ken Schwartz of Precise Sharpening, and today I'm going to introduce uh, the belt grinder that I have set up as one of the two belt grinders. I've previously demonstrated the Burking unit. Uh, it's a Burking knife maker. Uh, this unit is a Coot belt grinder. Uh, it's a grinder that doesn't come with a motor, so you add your own motor. And what I've done is connected up a three horse motor to this, and I'm going to go over some of the details with you regarding it. So let me just mention a few things about the grinder itself, and I'll just sort of move in here. So you can see that the pulley on here is a four inch pulley and a two inch pulley, and if you look at it, it's on a one inch shaft. Uh, the belt grinder has a 10 inch contact wheel, uh, flat area over here. Uh, in addition, I have a, a large glass platen. It's got a glass cover on it. it keeps things very flat. Uh, the belt goes up here. The tension on the belt is adjusted by these two springs. And what you have is a handle and a simple piece of plastic pipe I find works very nicely to provide a little bit more leverage uh, when changing belts. And so I'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, again, this is the motor. It's a three horse. Uh, it's a cast iron, totally enclosed motor uh, because you do generate some dust when you're grinding, so you really do need a, an enclosed motor. Uh, this hex wrench allows me to make adjustment uh, using these two nuts to change the angle of this. Uh, and so by loosening those nuts, it allows this entire mechanism to pivot. Uh, it doesn't go quite horizontally when it's normally mounted flat, but because I've mounted it at an angle, this allows me to go all the way down to flat and all the way up to a little past vertical. So, very useful. Uh, what I also do is, for more precise sharpening, is to set the angle with the angle cube and do that to within a tenth of a degree. Uh, I think I've mentioned that technique in previous videos. Uh, so anyhow, uh, probably the more interesting thing and this might get a little technical, is the controller. So this controller runs on a line that is a uh, 240 volt line, 30 amp line. Uh, there's a separate connector that allows me to disconnect the unit from the power source. Uh, this is the unit itself and uh, what I've done is to connect it up to a pair of foot pedals and one foot pedal lets me run the unit in forward and the other in reverse and I'll go over that in a bit more detail later. Uh, the controller is actually a pretty sophisticated programmable controller. Uh, it's designed to, to accept a 240 volt input but single phase. Most units have triple phase. Uh, so this allows single phase current to be used. The output of the unit, so you see it, it coming in and then the output goes to the motor and the output is three phase which allows you to do variable speed. So this trim pot right here will allow me to adjust the speed. The display shows me the speed and there's, I won't go into the details on it, but there's a number of programming functions available uh, that allow you to control any number of things. Um, I might allude to them as we discuss this a little bit more. So anyhow, let's turn this thing on. So that's the on switch, and you'll see it powers up. Uh, the unit can display frequency, or in this case, I have it set to uh, do RPMs. Uh, I might also mention that I got the motor and the variable frequency dri drive from Ed Fry 
of electronic motors wholesale. Uh, probably one of the best people I have ever run into in terms of taking care of a customer. Uh, just we had a lot of technical issues that needed to get resolved and just the best man in the world to work with. Couldn't say enough nice about him. Anyhow, uh, the foot pedals that I mentioned earlier have to use a separate isolated input outboard, output board called the IODA board. And normally I leave these screws closed, but I'll open this up and you can see inside the unit. And again, you sure don't want to get near any of these wires when you've got 240 volts running around. So anyhow, the particular part I'm talking about is this separate little controller board over here. It has a little green light going on. And these control wires run through here and out to the foot switch and allow me to run the unit forward and backwards. So let me close this up again. Pardon the blurs, but I don't like to leave things open with that much voltage around. So you can see that as I adjust the unit with the potentiometer, I adjust the speed of the unit. Uh, maximum speed on this unit is 1800 RPMs and I'll have a chance to demonstrate uh, how slow the unit can go and probably one question that a lot of people would be asking is why the hell do you need three horsepower? Well, I'll show you in a little while. Uh, in particular I needed a lot of torque at really slow speeds for some of the unusual techniques that I use. So let's turn the unit on. Now normally you turn the unit on and off over here and you control the forward and reverse motion over there. But that has been substituted for the foot pedal to externally control it. And so you can see, and again, just to give you an idea of the speed that we're running here. Okay, extremely slow speed at this point, just so you can see. And you can also look at the pulley to get an idea of the speed. So for a lot of operations that would normally be done by hand, uh, it's quite acceptable to use this at this speed because of the torque available. Now using the other foot pedal you'll see it goes in the reverse direction. Alright, now a lot of belts it makes perfect sense for the belt to be coming towards you and you see this also on the Barking unit. Uh, the belt is set up to run towards you but this unit, by having the reverse, also allows me to run a leather belt and run it at the same angle so that I have the belt going in an edge trailing motion and using the leather belt, which would otherwise be cut into. So that's sort of a quick overview of the system, and I'm going to run it through some, some of its paces. Uh, if you bear with me for a second, let me get this camera in position to see the unit running. Okay. Okay. So All right, so the, the unit works by putting the belt on pretty easily. You run it over the top pulley, then I run it partially over the bottom pulley, lean on that plastic bar, and slip the belt over the pulley. So, pretty quick. 
that bar really helps. It's a good little trick for this unit. Uh, now you can see the belt running again an extremely slow speed and just to give you a sense of it we can bring it up higher higher and all the way up to 1800 rpm and back down for low speed so Allowing for the very low speed gives me the chance to do things on this that I otherwise couldn't do. Uh, let's see. All right, so I think that's a kind of a quick overview of the unit itself. And let's see if I can uh, do a couple things here. Adjust the camera. Pardon the, the shaking right now. But yeah, let's take a look at this right here. And I want to demonstrate a technique that, a couple of techniques actually. All right, so let's look at the flat platen area that's over here. And what I'm going to be doing is showing how I can, because of the foot pedal, have the increased accuracy to work with a single beveled knife that you need to preserve the shinogi line on very precisely. So I'm going to be running it at a slower speed and with the foot pedal. Now, why would I do that? Well, it's very important when you, and I want to have this running away from me, so it's very important when you do this that you not be off on your angle at all. So what you can do is put the whole blade down so it's flush against the belt and you're fully positioned, you have both hands on the blade. Very important to have both hands on the blade. So now when you start, you're not slipping or sliding around you're not generating a lot of heat. Very precise. You can control the pressure. And you want to apply the pressure towards the end. All right. This level of precision on most belt grinders is just not going to happen. And you pretty much have to use hand techniques for that sort of work. Uh, So this is one technique that's it's very important for single beveled knives. I wouldn't risk doing this other than by hand, except on a belt grinder where I have variable speed control and enough torque to where even it, and I'll go at even a lower speed. And you can see right now, this is right at about 300 RPM. Again, set things up, both hands. You can see how slow it's turning, but yet if I put a lot of pressure on, nothing. It doesn't slow it down a bit because I've got all the torque in the world to work with. Uh, let's see. Hold on just a second. Just give a, a quick idea. Uh, very sharp. Happen to be using a, uh, a custom made A3 belt for a 2x72 grinder. Uh, I'll show another technique. Seems we have enough time on the video to demonstrate something else. This is a technique that I would seriously suggest not doing unless you are extremely comfortable with power tools and even then uh, I have to emphasize extreme caution here. Now we're going to be using the slack portion of the belt and I'm using this very fine grit 
Well, you'll see why in a second. Now, I'm also putting some leather gloves on for this technique. Uh, the particular knife that I'm going to be using as a test for this is a Richmond knife. And you can see that this is, I don't know if you can see it in good detail here, but that's the logo. It says Richmond Artifacts and it's an M390 steel. One of the better steels available for knives. Uh, particularly in a stainless type of knife. So, uh, what I really want to focus on is the logo, of all things. So, one of the questions that I get a lot is, how do you thin a knife? And, oh by the way, can you keep my logo intact even making the knife thinner? Well, most people would say, well, no you can't, because if the knife is thinner, you're going to be grinding off the logo. And some people actually take pleasure in grinding off other people's logos. So, I'm going to demonstrate a technique that minimizes the amount of wear and tear on the logo. And again, this is definitely one of these don't try doing this at home type of things. So, this very much fits in the advanced sharpening. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a leather glove on both hands and you can see that this is the part right here that I want to be sharpening. I want the belt to be going not this way, but this way. I want it going away from me for this particular application. And what I'm going to be doing is putting my hands under the slack part of the belt and pressing my fingers around the logo to differentiate pressure the area other than the logo and also other than the M390. So what we're looking at is eh, maybe I'll do it this way. Okay. Alright, like this around here, so these three points underneath these three points and the belt going in this direction. Okay, so here we go. And what I'm doing is I am differentially pressurizing the knife and then here just use the whole surface. So essentially what I'm doing is, and I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on as well. So using my fingers around it and pressurizing. So I'm pressurizing this area right around here, staying away from there and thinning the area around this. Now I would usually use this with a heavier belt but I wanted to do this with, for demonstration purposes just to kind of show the technique rather than the full grinding procedure which is pretty labor intensive. Uh, similarly this is another knife with a little paracord around it. This is uh, a knife that Fareed made and it's an extremely abrasion resistant steel and what I've done with this is made a zero grind convex grind but in some spots and I don't know if the light will catch it just right let me turn this around a little you'll see that there's a little that's missed over here so what I would be interested in doing in that is in the missed area is pressing up against that part to preferentially grind over in that one spot. Okay, and so what I'm doing is I'm using my hand and I'm putting a lot of torque with my fingers against the knife. And this will normally, by squeezing the belt down, grind most belt grinders to a halt. This is why I want all this extra power. All right, is to use my hand as a differential platen. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here is preferentially hitting certain spots and yes this will make those spots a bit more concave but the alternative is grinding the entire knife down. 
So that's the idea behind it. And thank you very much for your time. I uh, look forward to your comments about it. And again, Ken Schwartz from Precise Sharpening. You can find the, just to mention some of the products, the Richmond knives are available at Chef Knives to Go. The grinder is a Coot grinder. You can find that on, on their website, Norm Coot. Very nice guy to work with. Uh, the motor and the variable frequency drive from Electronic Motor Wholesales, Ed Fry. Uh, the Deba is a white steel Nubatama Deba. Uh, the smaller knife is made by Farid. It's using a S, uh, it's, a, it's a 125 Rex, 121 Rex steel, I'm sorry. Uh, Farid specializes in doing these very, very hard steel knives. Uh, I found that that knife I was able to reshape very nicely using some of the diamond belts that I have available for the belt grinder. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. I hope I haven't bored you too much with some of the technical details regarding the drive. Uh, keep in touch. Thank you very much for your time.